Was Onward good? I saw Onward at an advanced screening yesterday, and I'm ready to share all my magically juicy opinions with you. First, spoiler free, and then after proper warning, with all the spoilers you could want. Well, hello there! My name's Jeremy, and welcome back to Freeform Disney, where I talk about all aspects of Disney, from the animated movies to the theme parks to Star Wars, Marvel, and Pixar, and the TV shows, and everything else in between. And that is why it's Freeform. And keep coming back every day for new daily content. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Now on to today's topic. Onward is Pixar's movie version of Cheetos. Onward is Pixar's latest movie, and one of two new Pixar movies coming out this year. It centers on Ian Lightfoot and his older brother Barley Lightfoot, off on an adventure with the bottom half of their dad in an attempt to bring him back. But they only have 24 hours to do so. Onward is being made by a studio that hasn't been very brave lately. See what I did there? Four of the last five Pixar movies have been sequels, while I can't say that Onward is a return to form from the brave early days of Pixar, I can say it is a pleasant, enjoyable movie that has some really good moments in it. The voice acting is superb and stars Tom Holland and Chris Pratt, who viewers may better know as Spider-Man and Star-Lord. It is a joy to hear them work together and they have real chemistry as brothers. One of the marks for me that they and the writers, animators, and director did a great job is that I see them as the characters they are playing instead of as the actors or other famous roles that they have played in the past. And they have really brought Ian and Barley to life for me. The visuals are, as expected from Pixar, high quality. There is a nice fantasy-esque color palette on display. The CG seems to be of similar high quality, and there are a few neat things I haven't seen before that feel like they would have taken a bit of work to go ahead and animate. The world that Pixar has created for our movie to take place in is quite similar to our world, and by quite similar I mean practically the same. Except that magic kind of exists, and humans and other animals we know are replaced by some kind of magical but similar creature. There are some neat moments brought about by those differences, and they are used on occasion to make commentary on our world, or make a joke about it. Ultimately, the world of Onward was a little bit of a letdown for me, as it felt too thin of a pacing over our own world. I didn't end up being drawn in by that world. I didn't want to see what else there was to see in the world that we didn't see within the movie. But what I was drawn in by were the characters. Although, not at first. The movie is a little slow to start. But once the characters start to pull you in, they don't let go. By the end, you really care for our main characters and what happens to them throughout the movie really has an emotional impact on you. So do bring those Kleenexes right there. Why do I say it is the Pixar equivalent of Cheetos? Well, Onward is, in many ways, comfort food. The safe choice. It has a heart in it, and the main story of the movie is really nice. But that's just not enough to make it an intriguing Pixar movie. In fact, it really feels a bit more like a DreamWorks movie than a Pixar movie, and would ultimately rank in the middle of the pack for me as far as the Pixar movies are concerned. Now, that's still a good place to be, and I do recommend you see Onward. It's a good, solid movie, and it has some touching moments in it. Just don't expect to be blown away by it. There be spoilers ahead, matey. If this is where you leave us, then I will say, have a magical day, and may the force be with you, always. For everyone else, it's full spoilers time. So if you're still here at this point, I am assuming you're perfectly fine with hearing spoilers about Onward. Is that you? Okay, good. Then onward to the rest of this review. First, let's talk about that Maggie short that happens before Onward starts. Off the bat, I have to say that this really feels like Disney telling everyone, Hey, look everyone, we own the Simpsons now, see? By itself, it was an okay short. It was enjoyable enough, but felt very 
uninspired. By the end, it already had felt like it was starting to wear out its welcome, but luckily it stopped before it continued on much longer. And that end piece with the train being on a circular track? That was definitely cute. But here's the thing about all of this. The shorts that come before Pixar movies are generally great shorts. High quality, unique, great stories, etc. And that kind of comparison makes the Maggie short really fall flat on its face. To be frank, I was disappointed by it. Really not the best way to lead into the new Onward movie. Not for me, anyway. And now onward to the movie. There's a lot here, both good and bad. And I'm not going to go about it in a linear manner. I'm going to go a bit more off the cuff and jump around a little bit. Off the bat in the movie, I mentioned that it has a bit of a slow start. And it does. We don't really get into connecting with our characters early on. The opening feels a little bit cliche. We head over to the school. He's the outsider, but he wants to work on his courage. We've seen this kind of story again and again and again. And it's always a trick on how to make a character like that really feel engaging off the bat. And frankly, I don't think Onward did a good job of making Ian a really engaging character off the bat. He sure as heck gets there, but not off the bat. That said, the movie has a great finish. I love it. I'm so emotionally impacted and connected in there at that point that the movie realized its focus was really about the brothers was really, really good. Early on, the movie hid a bit of the fact that it was about the two brothers. And they did a good job of hiding that it was the two of them, assuming that was a good choice. And maybe that's part of what hurt the opening of the movie is that it was a little more all over the place, a little cliche. But once we really figured out what the movie was about, and the movie figured out what it was about, it really started to pull us in. I was really impressed by the ending where we had our main character, Ian, watching his brothers see their father from a distance, and that Pixar actually went for it. A number of movies would have copped out. They would have found a way to bring Ian over there and see the father, or maybe have the father stay around for longer, give him an extra day so they really spend the time. But they stuck to their guns, they made a choice, it had real consequences, and that was great to see. Another really cool thing in that whole finale section The dragon's face and the cobbled together dragon. That part felt really Pixar-ish to me. Very different, kind of unique to cobble the dragon together from all the different pieces of concrete, the cars. Loved what they did with the face. I really love the Mad Horse Tavern too, which is a Chuck E. Cheese-esque place where the Madacore, this great, powerful, mythical beast, is still alive from hundreds, thousands of years ago, however long it has been, and is now stuck in a dead-end job that she hates, and there really isn't that Hollywood ending that we like talking about so much. And that's what's happened to the Manicor. There she is, no longer being the brave adventurer. Although the movie then finds a way to bring her back at least a little bit to that. I guess she does end up getting her Hollywood ending, as a matter of fact. But hey, we really enjoy it, and it's fun watching her. And speaking of the Manicor, the mother is really fun character. Love her as a character. I love her going ahead and flipping her older son earlier on in the movie. It's a great way to introduce her character and give us an idea of what to expect from her right off the bat. Quick note, there's no button at the end of the credits, and I kind of thought there would be a button, so I was a little surprised by that, and that's okay. Doesn't need to be a one. I really feel the opening to the movie is unnecessary and maybe not a good way to open onward. It's cool to see the fantasy world, but it's not relevant to the rest of the movie. The info that we need for it is within the dad's note that comes to them later, and if we had first been introduced to it at that point in time, then we would have been watching from Ian's perspective, who doesn't believe in the magic, who doesn't believe his older brother is right about this. And that, I think, would have been a better play, because we would have been in his shoes, seeing things through his eyes. Ultimately, they might just not have known a better way to open the movie, and it was a fun opening, nonetheless. Okay, let's talk about the officer dating the mother. That character is really uninspired. He's a bit of a walking cliche, not a fan of him. I mean, I wanted to like, you know, all the characters involved, but we make him a buffoon right when we introduce him as he's knocking stuff over in the house. And frankly, if he's 
been part of this world. This whole world's been built around him. He's used to going into houses. He shouldn't be knocking stuff over left and right. It was only done to make him just that, a buffoon. So he comes across as very two-dimensional. And when we go to the car chase later on, where he calls in for the backup, it continues that two-dimensional aspect of him as a character. Rather than trying to really have an emotional connection with our two main characters of Ian and Barley, we turn into a cliche car chase, which frankly was unnecessary. It would have been fine just with him chasing them. I wish they had gone a different direction there and really had him try to have a heart-to-heart with the two of them to bring them back. We didn't get it, and it's too bad. Probably my least favorite character that was of any size within the movie. While we're talking about things that aren't as great, I'm going to wade into the LGBT character here. It's great to have more representation. I love that. Based on the way they clearly trumpeted about this character, they thought it was a giant big deal. And yet this character is on there for very little time. And on top of that, such a short, throwy little piece that I can be fairly confident Pixar is probably going to just delete that scene when they show it in other countries. So anyone who is worried about it, now we're dumping it. So we're not really being that representative as Disney and Pixar. And that's too bad because Disney doesn't have a good track record on this front anyway. It would be nice if they would just include characters that are more representative of the actual world. Let's talk about some of the good stuff now. How about the brother's fourth memory? Oh, I love that piece. We heard so much about the three memories that he was so used to talking about with his younger brother. But then it came up that, guess what? There was a fourth memory that he hadn't told his younger brother. And there was good reason he hadn't told his younger brother. Because this was a painful memory that really drove his character. His last memory of his father was being unable to go into the room to say goodbye to him because he looked scary, hooked up to the cords, he didn't look like himself. And because of that, Barley feels that he needs to put on this brave persona through the rest of his life, and he's gotten him into all kinds of trouble. But it's a touching moment, it's great, and it plays into the finale so well, because there is another part of my favorite, favorite part, is when Ian realizes that it's his brother he's been so close to all this time, even though they have problems, they have fights, but the connection he has with his brother matters so, so very much, and what he's looking for in his father, he already has with his brother. And then he's able to make a decision that is really, really touching when he goes ahead to fight the dragon off and let his older brother spend what little time they're going to get with the father and knowing that he would not be able to see his father at all, what he had been looking forward to for years and years in his life. But he realized that it meant more to Barley than it did to him. Barley, who actually had seen their father before. Barley, whose last memory was a horrible memory to have of their father, and that this would be able to fix that. And so that was such a touching moment, and I loved it. And the payoff of a moment like that made Onward so much better a movie. And while we're talking about that, the list really was great. If we caught on to it earlier on, we could see that it was talking about the brother. And we saw the different shots, like the dancing that happened earlier, the playing of catch, etc. And it was really nicely done. Loved the dancing piece, uh, some good humor there. And we found out the father wasn't this perfect paragon that we may have hoped for him to be. And that's a really good touch, too. Couple other things before I go ahead and sign on off. The Guinevere sacrifice? Really well done. An unexpected touching moment, especially when we're talking about a car. We're talking about an inanimate object, but of course, it's what the car means to Barley. And it's what it means to Ian for Barley to sacrifice the car. Loved it sounding like a horse when it started up and dropping the wheel as it went off onto its final journey to go trot off into the distance. Really nice touches. And as the namesake of this video, yes, the giant Cheeto was really cool too. And Barley eating their boat. I mean, come on, if you're on a giant, you know, you're probably going to eat your own boat too, right? Ultimately, I don't think this is a movie I'm going to come back to watch again anytime soon. But I certainly enjoyed watching it the one time. And it did legitimately bring a tear to my eye during that final moment when Ian made the decision he did and allowed Barley to see their father. 
there you have it. Those are my thoughts on the movie Onward. And hey, I really did enjoy watching it. I hope you did too, or that if you're still going to watch it after you've seen my spoilers, that you'll enjoy it when you go ahead and see it yourself. Did you agree with me about Onward? Am I completely wrong? Let me go ahead and know down in the comments. I'll always try to respond to everyone's comments as best I can. And thanks for watching. If you liked it, please give it a like and definitely share it with anyone else you think will too. And come back tomorrow as I look forward to Marvel's Phase 4 of the MCU. And if you haven't done it yet, click the subscribe button and ring that bell. Have a magical day, and may the Force be with you, always.